Post traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, it is well known as one of the top side effects of war. Soldiers returning home haunted by their experiences, sometimes taking their own lives. But when the Channel 4 I team investigated the deaths of 17 of those local soldiers, we found something unexpected. It appears none of them, not one, was diagnosed with PTSD. We spent five months investigating and through the Freedom of Information Act, we obtained 17 investigative case files of the soldiers' deaths. In not a single case file is PTSD listed as a factor. What started as a high-speed chase, swerving lanes, barely missing other cars, ended in the suicide of Fort Campbell Army Specialist Rico Rawls. Investigators say right before the chase, he killed his wife, fellow soldier Jessica Rawls. When Rico Rawls ultimately ran off the road that night, he took his own life. Rico's sister, Kiana Rawls, says her brother, who had deployed to Iraq twice, had all the classic symptoms of PTSD. I didn't really recognize my brother. I didn't recognize the person that he was. But a Channel 4 I-Team investigation found before the murder and the dangerous chase, Rawls was not diagnosed with PTSD. In fact, an Army investigator wrote, no documentation or testimony from specialist Rawls units or care providers to indicate he was suffering from PTSD. It was obvious. Why didn't the Army think it was obvious? Rawls is among the 17 Fort Campbell soldiers who've committed suicide in 2011 and 2012. The Channel 4 I team obtained and reviewed the Army investigations of all the soldiers' deaths. Some of the investigations have been heavily redacted by the Army. At least three never deployed and killed themselves. Some who did not deploy didn't show symptoms of combat stress and still killed themselves. There is no evidence in the files that we received that any of the soldiers were ever diagnosed with PTSD. And in five of the suicides, family told either investigators or reporters that they believed their soldier had PTSD. There were nights where I would wake up in the middle of the night and his hands were wrapped around my neck. He would have knives at my throat. Alicia McCoy's husband, Sergeant Brandon McCoy, deployed several times and was stationed at Fort Campbell when he killed himself. He also was never diagnosed with PTSD. In fact, the Army investigation of his suicide shows he was screened for PTSD four times and all were negative. The Army investigation reads he likely killed himself because he was under criminal investigation. His wife says he was innocent. I think the Army is trying to find a lot of people not having PTSD because they're realizing that it is a bigger problem than they ever thought they had. In the 17 deaths, none of them, it appears, were diagnosed with PTSD. Does that suggest that there are serious cases of PTSD that are going undiagnosed? There are cases where the main uh, situation tends to be best labeled with a different label, such as depression. Dr. Joseph Wise of Fort Campbell's Behavioral Health Department could not comment on the 17 deaths because of Army privacy rules. But he says in order to diagnose PTSD, the soldier must show certain criteria. It's not necessarily true that every patient that has PTSD commits suicide and vice versa. But this soldier's wife believes in some cases, military doctors are changing PTSD diagnoses. Melissa Burgess's husband is not among the 17 suicides, but she says he could have easily been. Look at his medical records. He experienced numerous traumatic experiences, including direct fire and witness death. He had trouble sleeping, thoughts of harming himself, and anger so explosive he once destroyed a laundry room. And while stationed in Italy, he was diagnosed with PTSD. But when he was sent to Fort Campbell and saw a new doctor on base, Melissa noticed they were having a hard time getting his medication filled. That's when we discovered that they had changed his diagnosis from severe chronic PTSD to adjustment disorder. When Burgess read her husband's records and saw the Fort Campbell doctor wrote the PTSD diagnosis had little supporting clinical evidence, she had real questions for that Fort Campbell doctor. That you are not only putting him at risk, but you are putting me and my children at risk. And he said, well, ma'am, I'm sorry, I don't feel the same way. I don't feel he has PTSD.
Again, the military could not discuss specific soldier cases. And the largest problem may be the soldier's fear of losing their military career. Alicia McCoy says before his suicide, she watched her husband tell his doctor there was nothing wrong with him. Former Marine Zachary Bell suffers from PTSD. That's the biggest thing is like it's the fear and the perception that you'll be seen as weak and that you won't be able to do your job. The lingering question, if these soldiers who took their own lives had been diagnosed with PTSD, would it have made a difference? So that was his bray. At just 21 years old, Lana Lovely is a widow. I'm not looking forward to the day where I have to explain this to my son. Her husband, Private First Class Michael Lovely, didn't die on the battlefield, but in his own backyard. For a while there, I spent the whole, all day, every day thinking that I wish it was me who passed instead of him. The Army investigation into Lovely's suicide shows he was considered a high-risk soldier who had tried to kill himself once before, and that Lovely's own unit leadership's actions, quote, contributed significantly to his suicide. And a Channel 4 I team investigation into soldier suicides at Fort Campbell found other cases where family and Army investigators say the military didn't do enough to stop the soldiers' deaths. I definitely do believe they should have done more. Here's what happened in Lovely's case. He and Lana had a fight. The Army placed him on a 72-hour cool-down where he couldn't see his wife. Once that clock ran out on that cool-down, the Army's own investigative report shows, quote, Lovely departed the barracks at precisely the 72-hour mark, and no one checked to see if the cool-down period was effective before letting him go. He texted several people that he planned to end his life. Within hours, he followed through. After Lovely's death, a colleague even filed a complaint with the Inspector General, claiming unit leadership didn't protect Lovely. The Inspector General investigators found the complaint to be unfounded. I met that laugh and that smile. Valerie Hudson also believes the military ignored a clear warning sign before the death of her son, Specialist Jonathan Williams. Williams was under criminal investigation, but was never charged. According to the investigation into his death, after authorities interviewed him, they warned a unit leader in an email that at times people in that situation are, quote, suicidal or homicidal, and encouraged them to monitor Williams' physical and mental health. But supervisors told the Army suicide investigator Williams seemed fine after the interview. But the next day, Williams was found dead, hanging in his barracks. They never did protect him whatsoever. They never checked on him. They just put him back in the barracks, and 24 hours later, he was dead. The Channel 4 I team also found three additional cases where the soldiers were in the hospital or under a special watch due to suicide threats in the hours before they died. One soldier was hospitalized for a prescription drug overdose and even told the doctor he wanted to kill himself. Yet one day later, he was released from the hospital without being placed on suicide watch. Hours later, he killed himself by overdosing on drugs. In the second case, a soldier's wife reported he made suicide threats. The Army investigation shows that when the suicide watch ended, supervisors kept an eye on the soldier overnight. Hours after a sergeant drove him home, he drove to another state and ended his life. This Army investigation shows another soldier tried to hurt himself. The afternoon after he was discharged from the hospital, his commanders informed him he would be disciplined for a prior issue. About five hours later, he was found dead in a hangar at Fort Campbell. Suicide prevention experts couldn't comment on these specific cases, but say there are limits to what the Army can do in cases like these. We can't do much more to hold those individuals because they have rights. There's not much we can do except try to encourage them to get the help that they need. Officials with the Army and Fort Campbell would not comment about specific cases, but did answer this question at a press conference about the base's new center designed to help soldiers handle stress. Do you wish that this center and the military's attention to suicides would have happened years ago? Should it have been more of a priority years ago? You know, it's really hard to Monday morning quarterback, you know, after the Super Bowl. It's really hard to say. 
you know who could have predicted